All right, we now welcome on Ryan Odom. He is entering his first season as the men's head basketball coach for the Utah State Aggies. Coach, how you doing? Doing well. I appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, of course. So, uh, yeah, well, Connor? Yeah, so thanks for coming on. And the first question, get right into it. So what got you into coaching and how did you end up where you are now at Utah State? Yeah, I mean, long story. I've been doing it now 20 plus years, I guess. And, uh, you know, really fortunate to be a coach, a college coach. Um, I know there are a lot of aspiring coaches out there and they always kind of want to hear like I did when I was a younger guy thinking about getting into it. Why'd you do it? And, um, you know, for me, I, I was, you know, I was fortunate to play for some great coaches. Uh, obviously, I grew up in a family that, you know, basketball was was really important in our family. Uh, my father was a coach, obviously. My brother uh, was coaching at the time, you know, when I was in college at Hampton, Sydney. And I was coached by a guy named Tony Shaver, you know, at Hampton, Sydney, who, you know, played at, at Chapel Hill back when Phil Ford was there. He was a walk-on and uh, had the great uh, pleasure of playing against Phil Ford every day in practice, which wasn't very fun for him, but um, it, it was a learning experience nonetheless. And uh, he got to learn from, you know, one of the best in the game, you know, and, and Dean Smith and all of the coaches that were around at that particular time, you know, in his program. And so, you know, I was fortunate. I learned, I had my father's way, which was different than Carolina. It was more the Virginia, Terry Holland, you know, uh, style of play, uh, pretty similar to what you see with, with uh, Coach Bennett and his staff now. Um, and then I also had the more up-tempo, fast press, uh, trap style of, you know, the old Carolina teams back when, when Coach Smith was there. And, um, and so that was really good, you know, for me. Um, you know, growing up in a coaching family, uh, I always thought, you know, my dad was gone too much. You know, back then there were no rules when he was an assistant coach and, and the head coach at Wake Forest. Not no rules. It was just the, the rules. You could go out whenever you wanted. And yeah. so they were kind of gone all – he was gone all the time. And so, you know, he was always packing his bag to go somewhere. And so – and not that I was neglected. I certainly was not. It was just more, you know, do I really want to be on planes all the time traveling around doing doing this? And – um and, you know, I'd always thought, you know, growing up, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I love to play the game. I want to be a player, but I'm not sure that I necessarily want to coach. And I think that's how most players are, you know, mm -hmm. kids are, you know, a lot of times. And, um, and for me, I'd always thought I'm going to go into the financial world. I'm going to do something like that. So I did an internship in between my junior and senior year in college uh, when I was at Hampton, Sydney and Charlotte at Bank of America with my godfather and, and had a great time, uh, learned a ton, was on the trading floor there at Bank of America. Uh, but it became clear to me I wasn't ready to give up hoops. <laughs> and how do you stay involved in hoops? You either coach or you work at a university or you coach high school or you uh, just try to stay involved any way you can. And I was fortunate enough when I graduated, uh, you know, Seth Greenberg gave me an opportunity, you know, at University of South Florida when he had just accepted the job there, just the timing worked. I was graduating from college. He accepted a new position uh, at South Florida and, and uh, offered me the spot. I rolled with it and haven't looked back since. So what made you choose Utah State? Yeah, I mean, Utah State, there's just so many positives. Um, you know, I obviously I always admired it from afar. Um, you know, the tradition here is tremendous. Uh, the league here I followed over the years, um, you know, is, is always been a multi-bid league, you know, since Utah State's been in it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I felt like it was a great opportunity. Um, you know, obviously, you know, who you work for is really important. And so I, I would uh, be remiss if I didn't say that, you know, one of the biggest reasons was John Hartwell. You know, he and I hit it off when we met. And, um, and then as I began to look more into the program and learn about the history and learn about, you know, the success that's happened, you know, over the course of, you know, you know, 30 plus years and even back more than that, this place is a true, you know, is a true program. 
Um, the fans love it here. Uh, you can just Google it. I encourage you to just Google, you know, the herd, H-U-R-D, um, you know, from, you know, our student section, one of the best student sections in college basketball. And so when I first started looking at that, I was like, wow, this is impressive. Like they care about their team. Um, and so I wanted to be a part of that. And, um, you know, they've had three straight NCAA tournaments, two straight NBA draft picks now, um, you know, in San Mero and in uh, my Escada. And, uh, and so I feel like it's, we're in a good position to continue to build upon, you know, what the former coaches and players, you know, that have, have uh, been here at Utah State have, have built. And so we want to, we want to be a team that, you know, folks know about, you know, across the country, not just out here out West. Yeah. So whenever like a coach goes into his first season, especially now with the transfer portal, guys will just leave all the time. You almost have like no players. Usually you guys actually bring some experience back with Justin Bean, Brock Miller, also transfer uh, Ryland Turner in. What is a successful season in your eyes this season? Yeah, I mean, certainly the goal always for for us and anywhere that I've coached is to win a championship. You want to cut down nets. Um, you know, that's why you do this. You know, you do it for the relationships and help, you know, helping folks that are helping kids that are coming in at a young age to, you know, at a, a time where they need mentorship and you help them grow and, and you develop those lifelong relationships with people. Um you're part of their lives, a positive influence in their lives, but you're also there to win. And so certainly our goal is the same as probably anybody else in the Mountain West, and that's to cut down the nets and make it to the NCAA tournament and then advance. And so that's that's certainly what we want to try to do here. Um, now, is it, does that mean it's a failure if we don't do it? No. I mean, you know, I'll let others judge that. Um, you know, circumstances happen, you know, both ways. You know, we have a ton of success or it just doesn't go your way. Um but, you know, how you go about it and the process in which you go about it is really important. And we try to focus on that here at Utah State. So back in 2017, you were awarded the Joe B. Hall Award, which for those who don't know, is presented annually to the top first year coach in Division One. I. I was just wondering, what did that award mean to you? And was that kind of a moment like, oh, like I'm about to take off, like, here we go on to bigger and better things? Or can you just kind of describe that for me? Yeah, I mean, obviously we had a we had a ton of success. Anytime you get awards, you know, there's a reason you got the award, right? And it's not yeah. usually because of you. You know, it's because of the collection of people, you know, that you've been fortunate enough to be around. You know, a player gets an MVP award. Well, it's not just because, you know, he was doing everything on his own. And it's the same for a coach. You know, when a coach gets an award, it's 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 really the team's award. And yeah. um and I think that's that's that was true, you know, for that particular award. And you know, going forward, and you know, at that next year when we went to the NCAA tournament, you know, again, that was a team's award, you know, for us to be able to advance in the NCAA tournament and have the success that we did. So um, you never want to get, you know, humility is a big thing with me, and so we talk about that's one of our core values here at Utah State. We always, you know, talk about, you know, you know. You know, just not not thinking uh, less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. And I think that's that's what it's all about. So you mentioned your dad in coaching. What's the biggest lesson you learned from your dad getting into coaching? Yeah, I mean, there's so many. It's hard to hard to actually, you know, pick one, um, you know, but, you know, I think one of the biggest things he taught me as a young coach, you know, I was all into recruiting. And so recruiting, obviously, is the lifeblood of, of any program. You have to have, you know, the best players, you know, and great players, a collection of players that really fit together um, in order to be successful in your own league and beyond. And so you have to be able to recruit and put, put that together. But more than anything, you've got to be able to coach them too. And putting the pieces together and learning the game uh, was what he got because I would always we'd go home at Christmas and he'd have his team at Wake and I'd be at South Florida or wherever my brother was Alabama or Missouri or wherever he was at the time we'd all come together at Christmas and I would start talking about players and recruits and this and that and he would want to hear about the the coaching part of it and the team yeah. and what was going on and how, the strategy like that's that's where it's all at and um, 
you know, the, the recruiting is, is a piece of it. It's a part of it. It's an, a vital part of it, but it's not the end all be all. You know, you've got to put the pieces together. You've got to coach these guys. You've got to coach them up, make them believe not only in themselves, but in their teammates and, uh, and, and show them a way and things that they didn't even know were, were possible. And, um, and, 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 believe in them to a point where they didn't even know that they could go to that level. And, and I think that's what coaching is all about, you know, is getting, getting folks to a level that they didn't even think they could get to. So speaking of making your players believe, we got to ask about the NCAA tournament game against Virginia. Do you feel like you got matched up with one of the more beatable number one seeds? And to follow up with that, I know that's a tough question, but to follow up with that, what was the, pre- the preparation like going into that game? How did you get those players to believe in themselves and ultimately pull it off? Yeah, I would say no to that one. <laughs> that was not – I did not think they were one of the – They were the number people. one overall seed. Yeah, I mean, I, going into that season, they had been the most consistent – or going to the NCAA tournament, they had been the most consistent team all year on offense yeah. and defense. I mean, they were top five in both categories. And so not only – where they're going to be really hard to score on, all right? You know, they they were, you know, they were scoring on you too. They were efficient on that on the other end, and so it was a problem. You know, no matter which half of the court you were on, yeah. And uh, you know, I obviously them losing DeAndre Hunter, you know, going into that you know game was a big loss for them. I mean, he was a six man. He was a go-to player, even though he's a six-man, you know, off the bench for them. And when they got in trouble, you know, they would throw him the ball. And they lost that, you know, going into that that particular game. Now, having said that, I would have never doubted my guys, the guys that I I was fortunate enough to coach, you know, that particular year because I had seen them, you know, all season, you know, overcome obstacles, you know, losing by 40 at Albany and then coming back the next game and, and being ready. Um, you know, obviously the culmination of winning a championship and seeing how hard they had worked and all the time that they had put in and the things that they have gone through, the peaks and valleys, you know, to lead them to that win at Vermont. I mean, that was a that was a huge thing for us to win on their home court. Uh, I mean, they had a the year before my first year at, at UMBC, they were undefeated. Yeah. Uh, in the conference, didn't lose a game the entire year. And we were close, you know, in two of the games, but um, we didn't face them in the conference tournament. But, um, you know, they were by, by far the best team. And then they had pretty much everybody back, you know, that next year. And so they were the overwhelming favorite, you know, to win it mm-hmm. and one of the best coach teams around. And, uh, you know, for our guys to overcome that and win that the way that we did, you um, it, it set us up for the Virginia game. You know, those two teams are very similar, the way that they defend and the way that they play offense. Uh, they're both well coached. And so the preparation leading up to Virginia, we were helped by we just had to play Vermont. We had a week, you know, in our conference, you had to wait a week to play that final game. And so we had a week of preparation for Vermont. And then we had another week of preparation for Virginia and the two teams were similar. And so we knew what was ahead of us. You know, we were going to have to play a, an amazing game to even stay in the game. And uh, obviously, you know the rest. I mean, the rest is kind of kind of history and will be there forever. But, um, you know, it's certainly a memory, a defining moment, you know, for all of us that were involved in it. How quickly did you realize something special was happening that night? You know, I mean, I think just being there, I knew it was yeah. special regardless of the result. Because um, we all, you know, I think one of the things that I told the team before that game, you know, was that we we all, everybody that was sitting in our locker room, and that was players, coaches, trainers, anybody that was in that locker room at UMBC that particular night had had their own path to get there. And they had all been overlooked. They had all been, you know, said, you can't do this. Um, you're not tall enough. All right. You're just an assistant coach. Um, You know, you, you had to transfer twice, you know, there was, everybody had their own story. And, um, and so, you know, I think we felt like, you know, 
uh, that particular night that we were going to, we were going to give it our best. We were here for a reason. Um, and so why not go out there and give it our best and see what happens? And I think that's what you saw. I mean, the, when did I know something special was happening? It was you know, when we went on that run in the second half, mm -hmm. you know, to break, break it open. Um, yeah. I thought we played while the first half was very ugly, you know, for most people to probably watch, you know, the, the drama was there because the, the score yeah. was tight. Um, both teams are playing. And you really go back and look at it. The defense was, was pretty strong, you know, on both sides of the ball. So obviously the 16th seed beating a one seed is unprecedented. How long do you think it'll be before we see that again? Yeah, I mean, who knows? I mean, uh, you know, you see some close ones. I mean, it almost happened the next year, you know, again. I mean, Gardner yeah. Webb was up big. And, you know, obviously the the Wahoos figured it out and 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 took it to them. But, you know, it's uh, it does give others hope. And so, you know, I think if you're a number one seed, you're always going to be thinking about it. You know, yeah. you don't want to be that. Certainly the coaches will be thinking about it. Yes, in the back the players of the might not be. <laughs> Do you feel – do you but, feel uh, slightly responsible for Virginia's national title the next year? Do you feel no, like you should be not for that? I don't feel responsible <laughs> for it. I mean, I think it's just, you know, they, you know, I think that, you know, we're, we're all on, on our own journey, right? And so, you know, we all have peaks and valleys and how you respond to those peaks and valleys. Ours was at a different time mm -hmm. than Virginia's, right? And so how you respond to those, those peak, those valleys, you know, is everything. And, uh, you know, and, and how you handle those peaks too, you know, that's what humility really is. Right. You know, mm -hmm. it's how you handle both, you know, if, if, you know, if you win these big games and all of a sudden you get big, a big head, you know, you know, what's right around the corner, you're going to get knocked down. Right. And so you don't yeah. ever want it to be because of that. Cause you, you think you're too good. And then you also don't want to think like you can't do it either because you just got beat. You know, Albany beat us by 40. Well, we had to flush that one down the toilet and just say, hey, that was the circumstances. They did really well. We weren't ourselves. Let's let's move on to the next one. And how you handle those in sports and in life, you know, determines the next, what's going to happen next. And, um, you know, our, our feeling always was it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. We know mm -hmm. they're coming. You know, that's what passion is. It brings you back passion is suffering and uh and you've got to you're going to have to go suffer and go through these really tough times in order to achieve if you really stay with it what you want and so that's kind of how we operate connor well, anything else that's about all i had to ask you thank you for that that was that was really some great stories and some great advice really appreciate that yeah, yeah thanks absolutely. again for coming on uh connor and i need to get down to a game at the spectrum this year yeah, you should do it. Yeah, come I'll on down. Utah. I'll, I'll come see one. Yeah, I'll fly to <laughs> North Carolina. But yeah, coach, it's a direct flight anywhere. Yeah, yeah there you go. Right here. All right, coach. Thanks again for coming on. All the best to the Aggies this year. And uh, thanks again. Good luck. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank Take you. care.